Primetime Sports with Scott Alexander is underwritten by Task Performance. Crescent City Steakhouse, a true neighborhood restaurant operated by the Vojkovic family since 1934, is the oldest steakhouse in the city of New Orleans. Serving only hand-cut, prime-age, corn-fed beef for over 80 years, Crescent City Steakhouse has become a dining destination for both die-hard locals and adventurous travelers who seek traditional, timeless New Orleans cuisine. Crescent City Steakhouse, 1001 North Broad, on the corner of St. Philip, in the heart of New Orleans. Hey, New Orleans, get ready for some rugby. There's a new pro sports team in town, and it's NOLA Gold, bringing world-class rugby to the Crescent City. The game is fast, the hits are hard, the fan experience is for real. Season tickets, lifetime tickets, and game day passes are all available at nolagoldrugby.com. I'm John Goodman, and I'll see you in the scrum. But here's the bottom line. say that. Good evening and welcome to Primetime Sports. Hey, I'm your host Scott Alexander and believe it or not we are starting our fourth year on this show. So I want to thank everybody from WLAE and CST and more, in, in particular you for watching us. I appreciate that. By the way, even though the football season, of course the Saints season is over, except for the brand new AAF, you know that new thing that just started this weekend, that league, well that began, I'm not quite ready to talk about that yet. So. We all know the NBA this season is in full swing, and their all-star game is this weekend. I'll get to that in a second. The NOLA Gold Rugby team, how about them? They're off to a fantastic start, but I'll get to that in a moment, too. And we all know NHL, that season is barreling down upon us. By the way, NHL is your hockey, y'all. I'm just joking there, but we're not going to talk about that. There's no ice down here. But college baseball, on the other hand, down here in South Louisiana is fantastic. Believe it or not, that starts this weekend. Do you remember two weeks ago, we had Paul Maneri on, the head coach of LSU, national champion. Well, they play a three-game series this weekend against ULM on Friday, Army on Saturday, Air Force on Sunday. And now you remember UNO's Blake Dean? We had him on last week. He's UNO's head coach, and they've got Michigan State coming up this weekend. And all baseball, all the time for this show. This week, we're going to have three of them on. We're going to have Tulane's Travis Jewett. The Tulane Green Wave, and they're going to play George Washington. He's a guest. Southeastern's Matt Reiser. Uh, what a great program they've had, and they play Louisiana Tech this weekend. And we're going to also have Nichols Seth Thibodeau coming on the show. They have a three-game series against Southern Illinois. And I can't leave out my guys from Lafayette, the UL Raging Cajuns. Well, they got a tough one. They go play David Pierce's Texas Longhorn team. They're going to be strong. But as for those other sports, hey, you know, the Pelicans. They continue to be in a weird situation with Anthony Davis. You know, Anthony Davis is playing right now because the NBA has mandated that he play, but the Pelicans uh, don't really want him to, A, because he said he doesn't want to play for him anymore, and B, well, they want to protect their trade assets. So this summer, they don't want to have an injured Anthony Davis to trade, hopefully maybe with the Boston Celtics or all these other teams. So that is so strange for the coaching situation to have to deal with Anthony Davis, although he is still one of the greatest players in the world, as we've seen in those two games since he's played. By the way, LSU basketball continues to be red hot. I mean smoking hot. This team, two more wins this week, one on the road against A&M. They had the huge comeback win against Auburn, and they were down 16 in that game. They just seemed to come down from 16, 18, 20. Almost every game, it seems, they are the cardiac kids. But freshmen, well, first of all, the player of the week this week was a guy that we love. There he is, Tremont Waters, all five foot nine of him. He played great in those two games, 36 and one of them. Freshman of the week is uh, another LSU Tiger, Nas Reed. He is the big, almost seven footer. McDonald's All American, doing great things. By the way, they have a huge matchup tonight against number five, Kentucky. Both teams are nine and one, barely trailing Tennessee, who's 10 and 0 in conference. Kentucky, LSU, that's going to be a giant matchup, and I can't wait for it personally. 
Hey, let's move on to rugby. How about the rugby team, the NOLA Gold? These guys are 3-0 and right now. Another great win, this time against the defending MLR champion, Seattle Seawolves. The NOLA Gold, man, Nick Feeks came in. I got to give him credit. There's Holden Younger. Nick Feeks is the next picture. Nick came in and played basically the quarterback position because they had a, a concussion of Scotty Gale, but he came out and did great things. They won 41 to 31. Congratulations to Coach Nate Osborne, GM Ryan Fitzgerald, and, and owner Tim Falcon. They're on a roll. They play this Saturday. Get on out there. They play the New York team that's Rugby United of New York. They call them Rooney. The last home game of four, they don't play again at home until March 23rd. So get out to Gold Stadium. It's right behind Shaw, and it's a beautiful stadium. Great setup. Have fun. Hey, by the way, one of my heroes, one of my big all-time heroes passed away this past week, Frank Robinson. If you know me, I love baseball. I grew up loving baseball. He was one of my first, first heroes. He was an MVP in both leagues. The only player to do so, you see there, he got the National League with the Cincinnati Reds. He got the American League MVP with the Baltimore Orioles. He also played for a few other teams, but man, this guy, how about this? He is, was an MVP a couple times. He was a two-time World Series winner. He got an MVP in one of those. 14-time All-Star? Are you kidding me? This guy did everything. And by the way, in my lifetime, which is at least over a half a century, well, he's one of only three players to win the coveted Triple Crown Award. You know what that is? That's when you get the, you lead the league in batting. You lead the league in RBIs and home runs. He's also the first black manager ever. He did that with the Cleveland Indians in the mid-70s. And he, he also managed several other teams. And he was the manager of the year in 1989 with the Orioles. Love this man. I got a chance back in 1995, not just to meet him, but I had an incredible event. I was, I was working a Cleveland Browns football game when Fox first got football. I'm in Cleveland, and they were playing the Orioles that game. And, and I just watched Cal Ripken get his 2,131st hit. And he had done that two days before. And Frank Robinson, they kept showing him in the booth with – with the great Joe DiMaggio. Well, I go and get a press credential for the Indians game on Friday, but that night the Indians clinched the, the, uh, the first division title in 40 years. But I sit down, I got a seat, it wasn't my seat, I just sat down there, and it turned out to be Frank Robinson's seat. I thought he was gonna kick me out. And he says, man, you can stay there, I'll see if I sit in this other seat. Anyway, I talked with him for nine innings, literally, we just started cutting up, chatting, and it turned out to be one of the greatest nights of my life. You see him right there with the great Hank Aaron. There was Hank Aaron, there was Willie Mays, and there was Frank Robinson. I'll throw Mickey Mantle in that mix through the 50s and 60s. These were the guys, and even in the, through the 70s when I was a young, young kid. So I have this story is much better than I'm telling you because I got a chance not just to meet him, cut up. We had a great nine innings. He even signed a ball for me, and I'm not an autographed guy, but that was one of my great moments. Rest in peace, Frank. You will always be truly remembered as one of the greatest of all time. Hey, welcome back to Primetime Sports. I told you today, it's all baseball all the time. I cannot wait. Hey, you know, the major leagues, they don't start for like another month and a half, but they get spring training is getting going. But the colleges, it all starts this weekend. We already told you about LSU. They, they have a three-game series against three different teams. UNO has a big series. But the three coaches here today, I cannot wait. All fantastic guys and great, great coaches. Let's start it off with my man right down the road. His name is Travis Jewett. And I believe this is his third year. I probably should know that exactly. But Travis Stewart is here. He is Tulane Green Waves head coach. And here he is for the third time. What is up, my friend? Pleasure being here as always. Thank this, you. This is and the you third are correct. Year, right? Third year. I know. I should have known that off the top. I was pretty sure. Goes but by the, fast, doesn't it? Somebody be like, it's the fourth year. And by the way, I just finished my third year on this show. So you came at the beginning of my second year, the beginning of my third year, and now the beginning of my fourth year. It's great to have you. Well, I really appreciate that. You know, uh, anytime. Excitement at the start of a season, and anytime we can talk about our kids and our great university, I love it. So thanks for having me. How about the start of the season? I mean, it's like everybody gets excited because it's like they always say, hope springs eternal, right? Yeah. And it's just exciting. You've been part of a championship team. I mean, you've tasted the nectar at Vanderbilt. 
Uh, there's some great teams there, and you're building something here at Tulane. And I know one of the reasons they brought you is because your expertise in trying to get scholarship players and figuring that all out. Going into your third year, how do you feel? Well, I feel good, Scott. You know, uh, we're more competitive. You know, not that we weren't competitive before, but we just have a little bit more layering, I would say. You know, we've got some competitive depth around the field. Um, that, to me, great organizations are about great people and competition from within. And right now, I think we've got the combination of the two. So it's showing up in our training, how we're competing, um, doing things like that. And um, like you said, we're excited as heck. Season's about here. Everybody's O and O. So you know, we all think uh, we're going to go undefeated. So uh, <laughs> that's not? a good thing to have. Yeah, why not? You know, why you just got to win uh, one pitch at a time. And Friday's just about here. And our kids, I know, have been well aware of this date. We just try to keep them a little bit more narrowly focused, kind of trying to live in the now, so that we don't lose out on the days in between now and Friday because we still got opportunities to you know, get better individually, collectively. And like I said, because of our competitive depth, I, I sit here and honestly, um, I don't know exactly who's gonna start on Friday. Now, I have a pretty good idea for most of it, but there's still a couple spots out there that are kind of up for fighting for, which I like. So we should have a good few days of training here and uh, hopefully we'll be ready to rock and roll against a good George Washington team. So you do you have some spots that are up in the air right now? I mean, you're, you're still trying to figure out some position battles, which one? Which one? Well, I think it's particularly in the outfield, a um, little bit behind the plate, maybe. Um, our starting rotation is, is set. It's been announced. And, uh, you know, we returned such an experienced infield. So those guys have pretty much kind of held on to their spots. Now they're getting pushed by some young kids uh, that, that are, uh, you know, making that competition good. But uh, for the most part, our infield set, our weekend rotation is now set. And then we've got a few outfield questions. Uh, catching a little bit so that's good you know and what it'll allow us to do too more than anything is not only are we better competitively it'll allow for those guys that are maybe playing the majority of the time that have actually had to play all the time before because now we'll have the ability to uh, relieve them get them off their feet maybe a little bit more keep them fresh things like that that will matter when we are hopefully doing what we want to do which is play into june Got a question for you about baseball in general in college and, and in major leagues as well. More in the major leagues because you play every day. But this is it. Football, you have you have a full week to kind of get over what you did the week before. You know, in, in basketball, you usually have two games a week. Baseball, it's generally four. And that could be a blessing and a curse because, you know, baseball is one of these sports you kind of ride these waves. And if things are going well, man, you don't want that. You just want to keep playing every day. But if things are starting to go one way, it's like, okay, you don't have any time to like sit and worry about it. you got to get back in it is that a blessing or a curse well i think it's more of a blessing yeah. you know obviously we get to play a game that we all love to do and yeah. and compete to win but um you know it just allows you to get right back on the horse you know and that's the beautiful part of the game it's a game that takes consistency it takes rhythm um it is a day-to-day -day game you know and these kids certainly want to play uh beyond two lane you know we want to recruit kids that want to play in the major league baseball and when you want to do that, your 56 game schedule turns into 142 to 162 as you continue to move up. So these kids need to learn how to uh, play it consistently and play it well consistently. And like you said, if it's not going well, you know, we've got to learn from past experiences and we've got to get back and make those adjustments, which baseball really is. It's repetitions and adjustments. So it allows us to get quick. Now we can ride the wave like you said and then also we can change the wave too so it's bad we can kind of get that taste out of our mouth and get back onto the winning wave. So we for the most part are playing four games a week. Now the first week out of the gate we've got our one five game week so we'll have to come prepared and you know how the pitching is that's probably not at full tilt in terms of innings and pitch numbers and stuff like that. So we're going to have to have a, uh, a few guys step up there and uh, chew up some of these innings that we've got Speaking coming. Speaking of the pitchers, it all starts with pitching. We all know that. you got to have a staff. Uh, you got some returning guys. you got another guy that's coming back from an injury, a back injury. Right? A little, 
A little play on words yes. there. He's back from the back. No, but you have Caleb Roper, obviously. I'm assuming he's the Friday starter. I could be wrong, but no, you're correct. He's the Friday starter. Obviously, you got Keegan Gillis. These are names if you follow two line baseball, you know them. And you have Chase Zaleski coming back. Let's talk about them and what they're going to provide for this team. Well, those three guys are are uh, you know mentioned starters for this upcoming week. You right. know, we we do talk about our positions are all rented, and um, you know we got to keep investing and playing well and doing things that we expect out of those positions. Uh, for them to keep there, but that's what we're going to start with. Uh, Let's Roper. Talk about Roper. Yeah, yeah about Caleb him? Roper, you know, local kid from Rummel, you know, started off at Arizona, went to San Jack, pitched in a junior college national championship game two years ago, was kind of our Friday guy out of the gate last year, remained that way, pitched through some an ankle injury, but he's a tough kid. Um, he's older, he's wiser. He uh, looks like a tough kid. Yeah, Actually, his routine is, is off the chart. Uh, his preparedness is you know, second to none. I love his heartbeat. I love his stuff. Um, you know, he's got a year of Division One baseball under his belt now, so uh, his his control is outstanding. He's added. Um, his pitches have upticked, I would say, um, in terms of their veracity, their movement, and some things like that. So he's certainly made some growth. And, Looks like uh, a he's tough had, long break, too. Yeah, and he's had some really good competition, him and Keegan, and some of these guys push each other. So uh, he kind of came to the guy we went on Friday, and and uh, Keegan will get that extra day's rest now. He's been training as he's going to pitch on Friday, and he'll go Saturday. And, and uh, you know, his year that he had last year, you know, is probably statistically not as good as he actually pitched. We lost a couple games, yeah. one to nothing, when he, he started. But he's been uh, he's been outstanding. I love watching this growth, not only mentally but physically. He's he looks like he's seven foot tall standing on a. Yeah, that's what I say. Is he as tall mountain. as he looks? <laughs> yes, he is. I mean, that was actually my first question because he just looks like a giant. He is. He he stands above me and, uh, he, and you're tall. he looks down to and the top tall. of my head. <laughs> yes. And uh, but mentally, he's made huge strides. Physically, he's taken this tall, gangly body, and I don't mean that negatively, no, right, but no, no, it's, it's negative. just become more functionally strong. He's more invested in the weight room. Uh, his body's organizing better. He's able to repeat his delivery. Uh, again, his veracity, his command of his pitches, and his repertoire has moved uh, north. So uh, he's he's been very good, too. So, you know, you made mention pitching is everything. Uh, I don't want to put all the pressure on our pitching because, Scott, it's really what we haven't done well in our first two years here. But it is the starting point, you know, and we have got to have guys that can stand up there and centralize the ball. You know, we've got to get the hitter engaged in the pitch, and uh, we think we're doing that at a larger rate now, um, which has been good. It's keeping our defense engaged in the game. It's keeping the flow going. Um, and when we do that, then I think we have a chance because, you know, it's a team game, and we have some veterans offensively that are back. And I think if we can get that pitching and continue to move the offense forward, then I think we have a pretty nice recipe to maybe do what we want to do, and that's win some games around here. Let's do it. Hey, by the way, uh, everybody that's had, had a bad back, and I've been I've been a victim of that, it's it's horrible. And, and, and I, I got to imagine it has to affect you in every sport because it affects you even walking. But like golf with Tiger Woods, you know, that thing, you're moving the back. Pitching, I can't imagine coming back from a back injury because that's got to be a long process because you, you're torquing your body this certain way. What's it like for Selesky right now? Well, he's... 100% go. So he's been uh, since the fall. He's hasn't missed a beat. You know, he spent uh, all last season on the DL, so to speak, and uh, wasn't able to pitch. So he got a kind of a head start on kind of his, his rehabilitation and some things like that. Certainly had to take some time off because, as you mentioned, it's a violent move. You know, there's a lot of bending and lifting and stuff like that that comes with pitching. But uh, he was able to use that season for you know, body and health, and then he was able to go out and pitch a little bit this yeah. summer, which I think was Chase huge. Chase Zaleski, that is, yeah. Yeah, he went out and uh, pitched this summer, was very successful, uh, throwing the ball hard, uh, always been a really good strike thrower. We missed him last year just from that alone, but, uh, you know, he's continuing to get better just like Roper and Gillis and really all of our pitchers, um, and he's won that Sunday spot. So we're looking forward to it. The back seems to be in the rearview mirror. Good, and, good, uh, good. 
I think he feels good about where he's at, uh, both mentally and physically, as he's going forward. Let's go to these hitters because, I mean, when I looked at the infield, uh, you know, I was looking at the returning starters, and I'm like, oh, my God, I, I know all these names. I mean, these guys, this is going to be probably, I'd imagine, one of the backbones of your team, if not the backbone. And it all starts with third base, man. Cody Hosey can rake. Yeah, he really can. You know, we're fortunate to have him back, Scott. He uh, was drafted late last year. I remember sitting at my computer really not paying attention, but the draft was on, and all of a sudden in the, don't quote me on this, 35th round, the Kansas City Royals select Cody Hosey, and I dropped my, what I was doing, like, yeah, uh-oh. No, no. But, uh, you know, <laughs> he was a draft-eligible sophomore, so uh, he still had that year to kind of bargain. He went out, um, had a good sophomore season. He's only continued to get better. Had a, an all-star type summer up in the New England Collegiate League for the Newport Goals. Um, his maturity is shining. He's he's gotten stronger. He's playing well, uh, and he he'll anchor down third base for us. Looking for a big year from him. Nice double play combo. Sal Gazzo, one of my favorite names in all of sports. I just love it. Sal Gazzo, it fits. Salvatore, I imagine. And then you got Jonathan Artigue, a good Louisiana name, Artigue. Uh, talk about those two and that combo that comes back. Well, just like you had Hosey and thing too. You know these guys that have been around together now. So we we this is where our veteran part of our, me telling you about our team and how it's broken up comes to play. You know, these guys are all kind of on a little string and it's what we call the front line of defense. Yeah. And you got to be able to pitch and you certainly got to have the front line of defense. And we go. have that with Hosey and Sal and Artigues and Trevor over at first base. So a uh, good middle infield combo. I would, uh, you know, think that we would catch a lot of ground balls. These, these kids work extremely hard at what they're doing. They seem to have uh, Velcro in their glove, which is a good thing. So the ball sticks in their bit, and uh, they got some abilities that way. So that, that should be a strength of our team. Tommy Matthews, a Hall of Famer that played for Tulane. His son, Grant, is one of the anchors in the outfield. He had three home runs in a game last season, so you know he can stick it. Uh, it'd be nice if you can do that every game. Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> but Grant and Ty Johnson, two big parts of the outfield. Yeah, no question. And Grant, you know, a lot like Artigues, you know, that – the stick to you know, I did find out that I think that is a word. But, yeah, it is, uh, it is. The maybe not going as well as they'd like it early in their careers. They don't give up. They don't give in. They continue to push and work and improve. Repetitions, uh, these guys keep hanging around, and they're now being rewarded for their hard work. You know, Grant last year, we inserted him into the lineup somewhere in there, um, halfway-ish, end up getting – a hundred some at bats, um, hit close to 350. You made mention the three home runs. He walks as much as he strikes out. So his plus minus on base percentage, OPSs are good. Uh, Division one baseball actually rated him as the, from an analytics standpoint, the fifth best left-handed hitter in college baseball from just an analytics standpoint. So he continues to swing the bat well. We've transitioned him more of a first baseman when we first uh, met up with each other, but he's working in the corner outfields because we're trying to find a way to yeah. get that bat in there. And then you made mention Ty Johnson. Yeah, he he's play. our he's our spirit train man. This kid uh, is uh, he he's a heck of a life force, you know. And um, he's fun. He really is, yeah. and he plays hard. And uh, I think he can engage our team. I think he can engage the crowd. Thinking about being a top of the order type of guy to set the tone for this thing. You got some great newcomers and you also have another guy coming back as a pitching coach, Daniel Latham, who obviously was, he played on that World Series team. I remember that back with, I think Ken Azzaro might've been on the, no, maybe it was after Ken Azzaro. It was Matt Reiser's team. Yes. Matt Reiser, I think he's coming as a coach there. But we give gifts on this show. Uh, like the guy this. that who's, who lives literally right Around the corner from your stadium is the owner of this company. It's called Task Performance. His name is Al Andrews, a former Tulane All-SEC player. How about that? Nice. They were in the SEC back in the day, the last one, in fact. Feel this. I'll have to if you don't know Task wear, wear yet, this and go knock on his door. And, and this is Tulane blue. I mean, I know you all are green, but you have blue in there, too. So this is the exact color of well, Tulane. Thank you very much. And listen, man, I was a former bat boy at Tulane. I, I, I very much appreciate the program. I love college baseball at all. I support all the teams in South Louisiana in a big way. I love them all. I love the coaches, and you're certainly in that mix. Here, also, this is a restaurant right around the corner Why, from your campus. You it's called Chaise yeah. de la Chaise. I appreciate on that. On Maple. Yeah. And you know where that is, Maple, and uh, obviously between Carrollton and Broadway. And here's a new helmet. I appreciate you for bringing that, Travis. I appreciate you 
the Tulane Green Wave hats. And that is the Tulane Green Wave, but we're not done. We've got all kind of baseball coming up. I'll tell you, this is baseball show. We talked some basketball in the open. We talked a little bit about football. We talked some rugby. But this show is baseball and baseball only. Next coming up, I've got my man from Southeastern. His name is Matt Reiser. And after that, it's going to be Seth Thibodeau from Nichols. These are truly great coaches and truly gay guys. Coming up next right here on Primetime Sports. Primetime Sports with Scott Alexander is underwritten by Task Performance. The owners of the Delachaise Wine Bar on St. Charles Avenue have opened up their newest creation uptown on Maple Street called Chez Delachaise, a new local wine bistro featuring a larger menu of small and large plates, a brighter atmosphere, and full table service. Additionally, patrons can enjoy a large patio out front as well as an extensive wine list offering selections from around the world. It's Chez Delachaise, 7708 Maple Street between Carrollton and Broadway. Rock and roll will never die. It's old New Orleans, my oh my. Come on, baby, let's go rock and roll at the city lane. Oh my, let's roll, let's rock and roll. Baby, do the rock and roll at the city lane, the home of rock and roll. Embracing New Orleans soul with style and fashion wear from NolaShirts.com. Show off your love for one of America's unique cities with shirts, belts, and hats in a variety of colors and styles. NolaShirts.com proudly celebrates the culture and embodies the spirit and determination of people from the Crescent City. The tradition lives on at NolaShirts.com. Hey, welcome back to Primetime Sports. Hey, I'm your host, Scott Alexander, once again. And hey, I told you, this is baseball. We're going to do baseball this entire show. We just had Travis Jewett, the head coach of Tulane. And of course, we're going to have Seth Thibodeau, the head coach of the Nichols Colonels. But right now, this is a true gamer, a guy that actually played at Tulane and was a great player on a World Series team. And he has done incredible things at Southeastern. And I mean incredible. Hey, man, when they beat LSU, it's not even a surprise anymore. That's how good they've gotten. Their program has put out some major, major players into the minor league levels and maybe even beyond eventually. But his name, well, you know him well. It's Matt Reiser. And here he is. Scott, man, as always, appreciate you having me on, man. Welcome awesome. back to the yeah. show, my man. Yeah. Hey. Southeastern, it's become kind of a hot item, particularly in baseball, but all these sports are doing well, but baseball, man, y'all are, are the real, real deal. I'm telling you, man, we just, we've got a brand, we've got an identity, and uh, it's, it hasn't been a flash in the pan. Our administration's done a fantastic job of uh, obviously continuing to build off the success we've had early, we've continued to do things facility-wise, and just promote it. Uh, the marketing team has done a fantastic job. Our in-game experience, man, I tell you, man, it's second to none. I've been, obviously, we've been to LSU and played in the box, and they do a good job, and they've got some rowdy fans, maybe a few more folks, but uh, our in-game promotions and our marketing team's done a fantastic job of promoting the brand. Line up, baby. <laughs> there Line you go. up. Uh, I know that's a big deal. By the way, I, this is a random question. Well, first of all, why is it good? What do you do? Because I want to try to get people out there. College baseball is so good in South Louisiana. I mean, it's so good. Yeah. And there's a lot of competition every team you play. And I'm not just saying that because we're here and I'm trying to make anybody feel good. It's tough. McNeese, UL. Obviously, LSU, you know yeah. that. You know, Nichols, yeah. Southeastern. It's like there's no gimme wins on here. Like, Not you know, all. you used to have. It, but the fact is, what makes your experience at home so good? You know, Lindsey Kramer's done a fantastic job of taking over our marketing. And we got the video board installed a few years ago. That's and, cool. Yeah, and, and she, she was uh, very innovative and very creative and going out and watching minor league games and uh, watching the major league games and how they do the in-game promotions. And uh, our fan interaction, we do uh, promotions, uh, the second, the fourth, and the sixth inning, the interaction with the video board. Uh, you don't have to be a baseball fan to come out. It's a very family-oriented atmosphere. Uh, now we have the lights that go into the flickering and all that kind of stuff for the How home cool runs and pregame yeah, intro nice, yeah. and just uh, what they've done again administration wise has just been fantastic to build our brand. I got to ask you though, you you are a great baseball player yourself. Um, I'll pump you up. You won't do it yourself. Very, but the very, fact yeah, is, very, is that you're you're a guy that like to get in the dirt. 
Yeah. There's no dirt. I mean, be honest with me. What's that like for you? Be honest with me, and I know yeah, it's, it's a yeah. money thing, <sighs> but it's weird to me when I see certain players that I know, like, you know, you like Pete Rose. Get up, and he's dirty. Right. That's baseball. Y'all are on turf. Two lanes on turf. The, the infield is even turf. <laughs> what, what is that like, man? And, you know, it's funny. The story is Coach Jones. Uh, I'm at the ABCA. I just took over. Jay just took over as athletic director, and he looks over and said, hey, man, you AD got your turf yet. I said, come on, coach, you know me, man. I'm always a dirt guy. I can't yeah. brush off those rubber pellets. Yeah. And uh, he goes, hey, son, you're going to realize you're not, you're not a player anymore. You're a coach, and you're going to sleep a lot better at night whenever you ain't going to worry about pulling the tarp and getting the guys <laughs> out there, having to do the work on the field. And so we had a game literally the, the previous year or the next year, and uh, I, I told myself, I said, if we ever get the opportunity to do it, we're going to put it in. And our guys love it, man. I mean, they literally they just go out there and lay on the stuff. Uh, it's encouraged the guys to be on the field more. There's less work, obviously, from a maintenance standpoint. So they'll yeah. go take the ground balls. They'll go hit the uh, obviously VP out there and, and not have to worry about tearing up the balls or it'd be the muddy balls because it just got done raining. So it's been a very big, big advantage for us that to help is true. develop our guys. That yeah. is true. Yeah. There's no doubt. I didn't even think of the maintenance because it's got to be a heck of a lot easier. Yeah. But let's be real. Let's dirt. It's dirt, <laughs> baby. Like, I can't imagine watching a World Series and just seeing, hey, 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 it's dirt. Hey, hey, by the way, we all grew up loving players, and you're a little different era than me. I'm kind yeah. of like the big red machine. I love yeah. the 70s, and I love baseball all the way through. I mean, I love baseball. I grew up a big fanatic. Uh, I, even up until 10 years ago, I could tell you what every team's third reliever ERA was. No and I hate that the last 10 years of my life I've tailed off a little bit. Of course, I watch every playoff game religiously. <laughs> but I'm not having to get in front of a TV every night like I used to during the entire 162. But I still love college <laughs> baseball. I love pro. But who would you grow up loving? Oh, man, I got a number of guys. Uh, obviously, Darren Erstad, Jim Evans, those two guys are guys I try to emulate a lot. Almost kind of hand in hand. You yeah. say Erstad, Evans, because they were the type they of do, players. They do, man. And, and the plays that Evans used to make in center field, I prided myself on my defense. I knew what I was offensively, and, and uh, I could run a little bit and try to do my deal. But, uh, yeah, man, those guys defensively are the guys that I just try to emulate. And then you yeah, had the Killer Bees, man. I was a big Astros fan back in the day with Biggio. And, Craig and also, Biggio yeah, from the Houston Astros. No doubt, man. No Hall doubt. of Famer. Hall of Famer. Man, but another. And there's Tony Gwynn right there. Tony Gwynn. And then another Tony one. Gwynn, man. You know, with Tony Gwynn, uh, just what he did. One of the greatest hitters of all time. Uh, uh, absolutely. And, and so I tried to emulate him more offensively of what I did. Uh, so that you know, you, you got role models, you got players. That There's Bijio. When I think of Bijio, you kind of look That's a little it, bit man. like him, man. You got that. You got <laughs> well, yeah, that. got a little dirt on the uniform every now and then, right? Uh, it's just uh, it's just a neat you know uh, obviously to be able to go to Houston and see these guys play. Uh, just you Pearl awesome River guy, right? Models. I am. I, I just am. remember that. I, I, I already had that part yeah. of your interview before. Yeah. I didn't want to bring that up, but I just thought of that. So you go to Houston. But, you know, Edmonds and Erstead, gamers like yourself, no great players. But your team, man, you got gamers. You got, you've had, you had the guy, uh, Fisher, what was his name? Jameson Fisher. Fisher. Yeah. That dude yeah, like, led the hit. league and yeah. country all yeah. year long. Yeah. And so you, it's no stranger to having great Break, and you have Matt Sorolla, the pitcher. Yeah, I just remember him. Yeah. But now you got a new ace. You got a guy, Corey Giacconi, who yeah. seems like I've been talking about him since the uh, the Bush administration, uh, <laughs> way back when. But he, he's he's great, but, but, but pitcher. Yeah, man. You know, it's a it's a very veteran club, and I'll see uh, Corey's going to anchor that pitching staff for us and, and being veterans. And uh, Corey's come a long ways. Uh, you know, freshman year was, was overweight, lost about 30, 35 pounds. There's a picture of his yeah. freshman year. Yeah, he's bigger. You can see he's a little chunkier. Yeah. Uh, got in the weight room, man. I'll see there he is, leaned out, and became a weekend starter. Velocity jumped up. Always a guy who could pitch, and always a guy who always won. Uh, it really didn't matter what kind of situation you put him in, uh, but always found a way to win, had a win in, in regional a few years ago against Rice. And uh, obviously the experience that he has, he's going to start and be our Friday night starter. He's a big-time pitcher. Yeah, hey, big what, time what, How tall is he? He's probably 6'4", yeah. Yeah, in that range. He yeah, looks and, it. And he looks a little bit taller as he leaned out, yeah. you know, looked a little squatty yeah. there early in his career. Yeah, but, uh, yeah he's probably in that 6'4 range. Uh, Carlisle Kessler is another guy that's that's, yeah. that's pitched before for you. Yeah, and, and you know they were kind of a one-two punch last year. Uh, we, we were very fortunate to get both of those guys back. Carlisle Kessler was uh, had an opportunity to go professional baseball and uh, just wasn't quite ready yet. You know, and, and I leave that decision to them. These guys are selfless the entire time. What they do for us. Uh, so I want to make sure, you know, that obviously they get a chance to make that decision. He decided to come back. Uh, and we're very fortunate to have Carlisle back because, in all honesty, man, to have those two guys with the experience they have, the year that Carlisle had last year, and to see the growth he had from his sophomore year to his junior year, 
his senior's got a chance to be another big impact year for us. So to have those guys in rotation, one, two, uh, obviously it gives us some comfort there to be able to score some runs on the back end. Every time I see teams with uh, the camouf camouflage, you just saw Kessler. <laughs> it makes me think of you because I have some good shots of you. I went to one of your games with camouflage. I can't remember a couple years ago. Hey, by the way, you have a guy. I don't know if he's in your rotation or not, but you have a Mississippi State transfer. That's never a bad thing. I know he yeah. played at a JUCO after State. But his name is Noah Hughes. Yeah, Noah Hughes had some big innings for Mississippi State his freshman year. Had an arm surgery, went to junior college. Uh, really didn't come back to the kind of end of the spring last year, and we signed him in the springtime. Uh, he's going to be a big reliever for us. Uh, going to come out of the bullpen, a guy who's has a very uh, unorthodox delivery. Look at the uh, leg kick yeah, right there. Yeah, big time recruit coming out of high school, man. I mean, just a, one of the absolute best players in the not only in the state of Mississippi, but in the southeast area. And so to see him back at Hines and also get back to where he was before, I think he's going to have some huge innings for us coming out of the bullpen. There's this stuff with Mississippi State. Yep. I mean, obviously we know what they're all about. Yep. Uh, they've, been, they've been a big time program for a long time. And he's been battle tested. So he's yeah. been at the Division One level. Obviously he's done at the junior college level. So uh, he'll be a guy we won't hesitate to run out there to have some big innings for us. Okay. Anybody else uh, newcomer on the pitching staff? <laughs> yeah, Grant Upton, uh, freshman from U High. From U High. U High. Grant yeah, Upton. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, another guy who just kind of emerged uh, here late in his career as far as high school goes and. Uh, we were kind of in a signing class. You know, you never can have enough pitching. Uh, so uh, we were really, you know, he kind of falls in line with the Max Scrollers, uh, the Kay Graniers, the Corey Jaconis, all these guys that have come in as freshmen and, and pitched a significant amount, some, uh, some uh, big innings for us, and then growing into sophomore, junior, and even a senior year role if they don't, you know, if they forego the draft and come back for the senior year. Uh, he's right in line with those guys, so you should see some big innings out of the two freshmen. You brought me back a memory. Kay Grigny from Destrahan. Kay Grigny from Destrahan, he's no. back. He's a fifth-year guy for us. That's another um, one, man. Yeah, man, was relief pitcher of the year. We moved him into the starting rotation, yeah. uh, and now he's back in the relief role. He's got the arm yeah. back to where it can bounce back, so I, I expect another big year out of him, too. I hope so, man. Yeah. I remember following him in high school, yeah, actually. Hey, you got a couple dudes that actually, especially the guy that was uh, used to be a shortstop, I believe, now he's second base, Brennan Bro. Yeah. Brennan Bro. <coughs> When I saw him as a return and start, I said, this guy's got to be at least eight years old. I mean, because that doesn't seem like he's been around a while. It is. And, and, you know, it's funny. You keep talking about all these players. Like, Man, this guy's been in the program forever, right? And this is where it gets me excited about the team we have. And obviously a guy like BB. He was a freshman All-American for us, came in, beat out a junior. He'd been a two-year starter for us uh, there at shortstop. Uh, he's going to make the move over to, to second base. Got really, really comfortable over there at second defensively. And I think it's going to help him offensively as well just to help with his strength. That's interesting. So you don't hesitate. To, you're playing the best guy regardless, Yeah, huh? that's it. Well, And that's what's neat about our program. They know year in, year out, you're coming in to bust your tail to win a spot. You know, you're not owed anything. Uh, everything that they're going to get, that's they're going to earn. And, coach. and uh, obviously, Brennan's earned the right to be at the top of the lineup with him. Uh, being a two-hole, and another guy we'll, we'll bring up is Cody Gross. I got to bring him. He's yeah, a leadoff hitter, right? man. Yeah. He sets the table. That's it. That's and it. And he's shortstop. And he's a shortstop, so we're yeah. going to flip him. So, you know, yeah. it's pretty neat to have both these guys in the middle of the, uh, of the, the field. You know, uh, we talk about building a base of a team is through the middle, catching middle infield and center field. And Cody Gross, in all honesty, he's back healthy. He had a shoulder surgery uh, this past uh, fall. Back 100% healthy. Uh, the arm's working right. Obviously, the bat. He's a guy who wouldn't shock me to end up looking at the end of the year and me and one of our uh, players of the year. You know, we've had a few of them over the past oh, he's years. A stud. He's a stud. Yeah, the strength's there. Stud. He can run. He can defend it. So, uh, obviously, another really good player for us. So, then to be 1 2 setting the table there in the top of the line is going to be interesting to see. What are you going to do at third base? Third base, we got Eli Johnson, a newcomer. You know, also we lost Taylor Swarner. Eli. Yeah, Taylor was was uh, in 15 yeah, or 16. Taylor yeah, was the player of the year. Player of the year, man. Come on, I follow, I follow you, yeah, team, baby. You know, uh, had an okay year last year. Now playing professional baseball, big hitter for us. So it's going to be tough to replace him. There's but Eli. I tell you what, man, we went out and we signed Eli out of junior college in Washington. Oh, and nice. And defensively, man. He's going to be one of the best, not only in our league, but in the southeast and maybe in the country. Uh, we, we call him Orc, right? The old Orc vacuums, man. Oh, Everything oh, goes oh, over that oh, way. He, it's like a black he's hole. He's a Hoover. Hey, man, it comes in. He brings in it up, just, but he's Orc. He's he sucks up. He's yeah. Orc. That's right. <laughs> he sucks it up there at third base. And, and really, offensively, he's been a nice surprise. Uh, just a good approach at the plate. Got some strength. But, man, he's going to drive in some runs for us as well. So expect big things out of him as well. Well, I'm going to tell you what, dude. It's, it's, I, I brag about you nonstop. I appreciate I really that. do. And you deserve every bit of it. I think you're one of the great coaches in America. Thank I know you. you could probably be coaching a lot of places. 
and you love it at Southeastern. I love that. We love Hammond America. There you I mean, go, my baby. My family, man, we're ingrained in it. Man, it's a good place. Hey, by the way, Hammond America. Speaking of that, I love when it all works out when I get the color that's almost <laughs> the color of your team. Line up with the gotta green. Be green, baby. Task performance. Love it. Have you love had it. that tat before? I have not. Oh my God, you're good. That, that feels good. Matt, feels, feels good, good, huh? Yes, it you does. You are going to I love use it. My pillow, man. That's it, a, it feel good. My bald head. I'm telling you. Yeah, put it on your head. <laughs> Bobby Abear was doing that last week. He got that same color. Bobby was like. That is Shays de la Shays. That's right. I know you know that is Maple Street. Yep. He went to Tulane. Yep. It's right down the street right down between the Broadway and Carrollton. Yep. And I'm going to give you this because you're pimping your sport. I'm going to pimp mine. This is my no new doubt. sport. Major League Rugby. 3-0. and First place. I love it. The highest scoring team in the league. And they play New York. Four straight home game. The last one is this week. It's on Saturday awesome. at 2 o'clock awesome. over there at dudes. Gold Stadium. It's my man. Me. Awesome, I know it's man. not easy to get down here from Hammond, but I appreciate the effort. Hey, as always, man. Anytime. Love it. I'll give my man Grant a shout out. Grant, we took him from Southeast, and he works with the Major League Rugby <laughs> team as well. Hey, by the way, want to thank Matt Reiser. Also want to thank Travis Jupe. I'm not done yet. I got Seth Thibodeau, the head coach for Nichols. That's right. Nichols is now sexy, too. We're coming up next right there on Primetime Sports. Hey, welcome back to Primetime Sports. I told you once again, all baseball all the time. This show, it all starts on Friday. Everybody's got games coming up. All the local teams, South Louisiana. I talked about UL earlier, LSU, UNO. We just saw Matt Reiser from Southeastern. And, of course, Tulane's Travis Jewett in the beginning. But one of my favorite guys coaching here in South Louisiana is a Lafayette native. He went to LSU Eunice, William and Carey, where I'm assuming that's where he met his wife. And he is now in Nichols and Thibodeau, Louisiana. His last name is Thibodeau, but he has got an E in there. I don't know why the city spells his name without the E, but here he is. Seth Thibodeau, how are you, my friend? I got this schedule right here. It's a, a schedule of all the games. I love how you did this. Baseball on the bayou. You did the Field of Dreams. Well yeah. done, my friend. Use a little sugar cane in there. I had to make it spi yeah. spice it up a little bit. Sugar cane <laughs> instead of cornfields. Right. I love it. I didn't even catch that. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. Nichols baseball. Uh, by the way, there is great baseball in the bayou, isn't it? Yes. I mean, bayou all the way down from where you grew up in South Louisiana and beyond to McNeese. Uh, just some great baseball there's, being played there's down There's great here. baseball, and if you look at all the colleges now, along I-10, all the way from the south, you know, south Louisiana, all the way to southeast Louisiana, everybody's good. Everybody's good. Everybody's good. From I know. UNO to, to Lake Charles to northwestern, the entire area. So that just tells you how good high school baseball is in the state, and it's a smaller state. So we're always fighting the same guys for players, and uh, uh, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's you know you, you got to feast your fan a little bit and find your guys. But it's it's great baseball and it's an awesome baseball. I guess since we've now had you're the fifth coach we've had in three weeks, um, I, I guess people would be curious. What is your relationship with these guys? I haven't had the McNeese coach on yet. I've not had. Uh, I think that's Robo Show, right? Yeah. Uh, Justin Hill at McNeese, just, rubber just, shows at UL. That's what I meant, UL. Yep. The yep. rubber shows at UL. But yep. I haven't had those guys. But I've had everybody this side of I-10, obviously yeah. Maneri, I've had Blake Dean, we mm -hmm. just had Matt Reiser, and of course Travis Jewett. Uh, what is your relationship with them? It's a, it's an awesome fraternity. There's a respect for each one of us because we all know the, the battles that we go through. You know, even Maneri, who's, who's been you know, at UNO as well. So with that, everyone gets it and they know the grind of it. And so it's an easy phone call to make if we need something from any of those guys. Matt and I coached Matt at engineering college. We're close friends. Uh, Blake Dean and I have become good friends. Travis Jewett and I have become good friends. Uh, Justin Hill at McNeese and I are good friends. You know, I grew up not 10 miles from T Tony Robichaux. So we all kind of get it and, wow. and we know each other that well. And any of those guys, I can pick up the phone call and give them a call and, and, and have a conversation and even lean on for, for something as well. So. You know, uh, I think people, you made a reference to Maneri being a uh, UNO. People would be surprised because he started as a baseball player from the city of Miami Went to LSU for two years, and then he went to UNO. And, of course, he has great respect for all, because I've asked him the same question. He's like, yeah, 
it's tough down here. That, he goes, we lose a lot of midweek games sure. because our competition's so tough. And he goes, there's no like letdown right. in the middle of the week, which makes it tougher for you as a coach yeah. because you know you win and die and, and you live and die with these sure. records. Right. Uh, it makes it hard, doesn't it? It does. Every game becomes a playoff game for you, but uh, you just you name so many good coaches. Everybody in the state has got great coaches. Isn't it's it awesome. crazy? Yeah. Um, and, and North Louisiana is pretty good too. Sure. That's the other thing. Hey, um, one thing is that, dare I say, that Nichols has become sexy. Yeah. Uh, I see a lot more in shirts, yeah. uh, a lot more in hats. Uh, you know, Chase 4K has helped that. Obviously, sure. the football program's done well. We know what Tim Rebo's done. I know uh, Richie Riley, before he left to South Alabama, he got that basketball thing rolling. Right. Um, and then, you know, baseball, you had those two years in a row, man. Y'all were just killing it, right. and now you kind of plateaued. Right. Where, what does it look like for baseball coming up? We're really hoping to kind of keep up. Thibodeau has become title town because, you know, basket, town. Doobie took women's yeah. basketball to the dance last year. I didn't year. mean not to bring up right. her. But that's how good Doobie it's going. Play, yeah. You know, right, right. softball won the league last year, and it's picked to win it again this year. And her and son so, plays for UNO, right? right. Yeah. Doobie, yeah, former yeah. UL Raging Cajun. Tough Doobie plays on son Scott plays on right. uh, country day guy plays that's at right. UNO. So that's crazy. Yep. Awesome family. But uh, it is, it's, it's fun though, because the atmosphere is a buzz on, on and Nichols and you come around New Orleans and see the alumni coming out. We played a football game at Tulane this year. I think we had five or 6,000 people from Nichols there. So there's definitely the end with the sword is, is, is a buzz and it is sexy right now and it's awesome. And then uh, we got to keep up with all these, these, these people on campus that are winning titles and bringing rings home, but uh, it, it has become title town. Well, it's funny. I just brought up something else. I mean, you're talking about full circle. Do- Doobie's brother uh, was a guy I played with wow. in high school. He's a few years younger than me, but he was a guy that was playing as a ninth grader, yeah. uh, Ray Ronquillo, wow. who went to Dallas South. They went 40 and won his senior year, so wow. those guys, they all went. Right. Uh, by the way, your team. When, when I was going through some of your returning starters, there's a couple that just popped out of the page. It seems sure. like I've been seeing them every year. And it's your shortstop and right. third baseman, Ethan Valdez and Brady Bell. Let's start with Ethan. Uh, this guy's a rock solid leader. What's he mean for your team? He means a lot to me personally, our coaching <laughs> staff, our school. He's got a degree already, you know, and he's up for so many numerous preseason awards. He's been voted team captain. He's going to wear Daryl Hamilton's number 11. Uh, he's widely respected on our campus and our community. Uh, he's an unbelievable human being, and I'm fortunate to have been able to coach him the last three years and uh, really looking forward to him really kind of jumping over to short. He's been playing mostly second base. He's played third base. He can move around. has led off for us for three years. Uh, we'll have uh, potentially breaking the, the all-time games played record at Nichols as well. So a tremendous human being, and, and I can't wait to see him on opening day with that that C on his jersey, you know, and, and representing the captain, that. Captain, man, deal. that's yeah. so cool. I gotta say, I didn't know. Could, you were talking about Daryl Hamilton from Baton Rouge. He played for the Brewers and yes. I think the Mets, maybe. Yes. That's he. He was a Nichols grad. He was a Nichols grad. He and his brother as well. And and he wore number what a eleven. Great ambassador for your yes. team. Awesome ambassador. He used to hang out with our players all the time before he passed away. And so since then, we've always passed on the number eleven, which Daryl wore at Nichols to a, a, you know, an eligible guy that's a senior that's a heck of a leader and, and really displays what Daryl did in his life, lifetime. So uh, we're, we're keeping that legacy going, and, and Ethan's going to wear number 11 this year. The more I, I, I've worn the shirt you gave me last year a couple times, um, and it's funny, I get, I get more response than I, I thought of. Like Stephen Watson, who's the CEO, CEO yeah. of the uh, – right. I wore it to the to the D-Day Museum, yeah. the World War II right. Museum, and he's like, you know, I went there. I'm like, what? Yeah. And then he was on my show after that, so I knew that. But That's yeah, awesome. but you got a lot of great alumni sure. that come from the school. We have an awesome group of alumni. We have an awesome group of guys that are very supportive, especially in this area. It's it's deep rooted in New Orleans. When we play here against UNO and Tulane, and this year we're going to play at Zephyr Field. There's always a lot of red. You got Southern stadium. Miss there, yeah. right? Yeah, that's right. On and, you know, on March 26th, yeah. we play them there. So it's fun to see the red when we come down this way. And uh, it's not that far away from Thibodeau, though. Speaking of red, you've always been red. Yeah. You love the Cincinnati Reds because my yes. favorite team growing up was the 76 Big Red Machine. Yes. And I don't bore you, but I will name you all 25 guys. Yeah. I'll name you a start <laughs> lineup pitching. I'll right. name you the roster. Uh, but anyway, but you like the you – like the, you're about 14, 15 years younger yeah. than me, so you like the group that was 14 years yeah. later, the 1990 the champion 90 Reds. Group. I'm telling you, when I was a child, my sister lives in, lived in Plant City, Florida, and uh, that was where the Reds were at the time for spring training, when Pete Rose was still the manager, late 80s, 88, 89 time. Yeah, yeah. So that was when that team was just starting to come together. Oh, yeah. And then he got let go with all the, the things that went on, and uh, in comes Blue Pinella, and that team shot straight up, and all those players 
I started rambling off to you. That was that was my, my heroes back then. So oh, Eric you, Davis. Let's oh go with them. Yeah. Barry Larkin Hall of Fame. Yeah. Eric Davis was. This is a guy I don't think still gets enough credit for how Ever. great he was. Because right. he was one of the most talented players I've ever sure. seen. I, he's from the city of Los Angeles, but he came to Cincinnati. And also, Barry Larkin, one of the greatest of all time. I think if, if you switch places with him and Jeter, he'd probably be probably Jeter. So. Because, exactly right. because Jeter played in New York. Sure. And then Chris Sabo was the, the gritty, gutty yeah. guy. And then obviously... And Rob uh, Dibble, Myers, the Nasty Boys. The Nasty Charlton. Boys. And, and people forget Paul O'Neill. Paul O'Neill. Because he became a Yankee. Right. But those great players from the Reds... From that Cincinnati Reds team that won the World Series, uh, I think we even have pictures of. Yeah, we'll, we'll get them there yeah. eventually. But yeah, they're great. Look at that. There That's the go. team that I won love it that all. Picture. And some <laughs> of those players. But that to me was the biggest upset. Yeah. Like when you look at Larkin and, and, and Coach Pinella, when in that we have a shot of them all together right. as well. But that team, to me, was probably the biggest upset in my mind. Right. Because of the way they took down the Oakland A's, because Oakland right. had just killed everybody in '89. And they, they were hugely upset themselves in the 88 by the sure. Los Angeles Dodgers. So everybody's like, this team could have been a three-peat. There's, there's a yeah. few of them right there. But, you know, you were a kid. That yeah. was like a... That was a big deal. That was a big deal for you. It was a big huh? deal because at the time, the A's had Ricky Henderson and the Bash Brothers and, you know, Eckersley. I could and go on and on. You can go through Bob them all. Bob Welch, Carney like, Lansford. They were, I mean, at that time, basically what the Patriots are to football yeah. right now. It was yeah. like, man, these guys are incredible. And for the Reds to do what they did and pitch the way we did... Jose Rijo was incredible. Uh, it was a heck of a series. Jose Rijo, a lot of that's, fun, a, that's a blast from the past. Yeah. He was just, he was big and he was a little wild, but all of a sudden he's right. like, he's getting that fastball right. over there. No. <laughs> that's right. Hey, uh, your team though. Yeah. I want to go back to Brady Bell because you talked a little bit about Valdez, what he means to you, but this is another senior that's been there for a long time. He really has. He's become a tremendous defender. He has taken pride in all the, the little things about baseball that uh, you don't really talk about, not just hitting. Brady's become a great defender. A great bunner. Uh, he moves runners well. Man, he's an unbelievable teammate. Probably voted as one of the, the top his top teammates on our team amongst his peers. So he's also got a Nichols degree. I'm coaching guys with degrees already working on masters. Smarter so, than us. That's right. So <laughs> I'm proud of him. I'm proud of who he's become. He's been there for us the entire way. You know, he, he graduated early just as Ethan did. Yeah. And as you know now, when you graduate early, you can transfer out, and these guys have been loyal to Nichols. And they stand, right. That's yeah, right. that is a tough rule. Hey, yeah. by the way, I'd be remiss not to mention another key returning starter, catching Dylan Bell. Yeah. Spell with an E, kind of like right. Joey Bell. Well, right. Albert, don't call me Joey. Yeah. Uh, what's he bring to you, team? He brings a lot of juice to the, to the offense, and he's got a chance to run the ball out of the yard, hit some doubles. He's a big physical left-handed hitter. It's a, now a junior. I really came on strong last year, and I really expect a lot of them this year. We're excited to see them, you know, take over a little bit. Pitching staff, you got to win with pitching. I yep. talked about that in the previous segment, but hey, Jake Badavian coming back. You yep. got Parker coming back, yep. and then you got Tarver, Adam yeah. Tarver, who I remember from a couple years ago. He's coming back from injury, but he's also your first baseman. Talk about sure. them as pitchers. Well, I'm excited about our staff because we we seem to be healthy, and we seem to have recruited very well there in our bullpen. I uh, like our weekend starters, Parker White, all those guys that are, that are returning, Jake Badavian. They are very, very mature now. Adam Tarver has been with us for four years, another mature arm. There's some young arms that are coming up too as well. You know, Zach Oten, Kyle Clayton, a couple of local guys from this area. And Trevor Kilcrease, a, a guy who's probably going to go for us on, on number one our, on Friday night. So uh, there's, there's some depth there, and uh, we're excited about using them. And uh, we will, we'll be able to mix and match righties and lefties, and, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. What's your, what's your favorite uh, thing about your pitchers? I mean, like, what, what do you want them to do on the mound? I really want them to be able to throw the fastball on both sides of the plate and, and, and be able to establish that. And certainly uh, want to see them be able to elevate and sink it when they, when they have to. And because I think we can really play defense. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're at the left side of our defense is really good. We can really catch and throw it in the outfield and, and run some things down. So um, tremendously excited about our defense. And it gives our pitchers a ton of confidence as well. Hey, um, by the way, you played on a team called the Baton Rouge River Bats. Uh, you're a great baseball player yourself. Uh, I love the logo. I had to dig deep yeah. for this one. But do you remember playing? And it's a little fuzzy, but I had to get in there. The Baton Rouge River yeah. Bats. When was this? This was some great players on this team. This was in 2003. I actually won the league that year. I got hit in the face with a fastball in Pensacola. So, oh, my goodness. Uh, my season ended. But would you, would you know that the great Jason Williams, former LSU infielder, 
would play home games only for that team. So he played all the home games, and I played the road games for the River Bats at second base. But we had some good players, some fun players, and uh, that was a, he was an awesome He was home games experience. only. Yes. I and, love it. Yeah. All right, I'll play for you, but I yeah. ain't leaving Baton Rouge. <laughs> hey, uh, we give gifts here. By the way, good luck yeah, this season. Thank you. I appreciate and I'm coming that. down to, let me get this right, Ben Meyer Field at Ray Didier State Field. No, That's Ben right. Meyer. Diamond. What is it? Ben, ben Meyer Diamond. Diamond, every day. For short, yeah, I mean, I for short, you can just call it the did. That's what we, we the call did. it. The did. We're coming right. down to the did. I yeah. want to get down there. I also want to get to that game. Everybody, if you're in New Orleans area, yeah. go down there. Southern Miss, March 26th, when the season fun. starts. You play Tulane, by the way, at the did. That's right. Uh, coming up pretty soon. February 26th, yeah. I believe. That's right. And here, by the way, I don't know if you have task performance, because last year we weren't given these this out yet. This is awesome. Thank but you so much. Have you heard of Task? I've seen him before, and I've been wanting to try one of these out. So you got I really it, baby. Appreciate this. This is awesome. Thank before, you. Before long, that's going to be your, yeah. your your team thing. That's awesome. And when you bring your beautiful wife, who you met at Can't William Carey, William yeah. Carey, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Did you? I yeah. just, I just, I didn't know that. I just Pretty figured. Good. I know she played sports there. She loves New Orleans, and she loves eating here. So I can't wait to bring. And her. here's my new thing. I'm going to show you this: the that's rugby cool. thing. Oh, uh, this camera. Hey, with the rugby thing, the Major League Rugby is here. We're undefeated, man. That's cool. I'm calling the games here. We have another home game this. I know you can't make it. You got a game. But this <laughs> Saturday, if you can't get down to Nichols, they play. That's cool. Uh, thank they you play so against much. New York. The, that's to be a last home game until March 23rd. So get on out there. Got to thank so wow. many people. Hey, I got to say prayers for my producer and his son, Will Hill. He had to rush out, so he could not be doing He didn't do the show, but prayers for his son for sure. And, boy, big step up for Naila Jones. I mean, it's, listen, this girl's a producer, but she stepped in at the last second to do this show. So I want to thank her and Lexi Thomas and, obviously, Tommy O'Connor and the Redhead Tsunami and everybody at WLAE and CST. We'll see you again next week right here on Primetime Sports.